Oh, welcome everyone. That's excellent. Um, welcome to Thursday. How are you going, Brad? Yeah, not bad, Patrick. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Friday's inside. All right. <laughs> uh, let's go skip through a little things about the labs and then we'll come back around any questions that anybody wants to clarify. Um, I'll just go to the share mode for a moment. And um, in particular, thank you very much to all those people that have been diligent and trying to get labs together, etc. Fantastic. And uh, so when you go down to your laboratories, I've changed it a little bit just to sort of hopefully make it a bit more obvious. So I'm looking at the groups now and I was asking people to form groups by the end of week one and I think I have one group, so it's been good. So I've changed this slightly just to uh, hopefully uh, uh, bring a bit more life to it. But now, as of yesterday, this is the groups that we've got. And um, if I just cycle through, uh, what we do is that um, for the last couple of years, um, like these Zoom sessions, that we have for the workshops, we I've been doing that for the lab so that um, all campuses basically are, are doing a virtual lab. They're doing the lab really in their own campus. Um, and uh, so this year I've now extended it to the residential school because um, just more and more people, you know, I'd like to try and accommodate people. So if you're in Mackay or something like that and you're a distance student, look, it's not always practical or, you know, getting work, I mean, work's pretty you know, good with people, but the reality, of course, is that if you were in the Mackay campus going to work and you could come to the labs and uh, you don't have the traveling time to come to Rockhampton, well, fantastic, so that's what we do. So now what happens is is that if you're, again, uh, in the Mackay area, for argument's sake, and you'd like to do the residential school in Mackay, we'll come in and do it there, but you've got to form a group then either with other distant students or with the students in Mackay. And you'll see that, if you have a look at Mackay here, we've got a group here that um, have got Mackay students, um, and also um, mixed mode, so that's great. Um, Jaden's been doing some wonderful work there. So then we have another group. Um, we split their group because it was getting too big. So um, Jaden's been doing a lot of work up there in Mackay for that. Greatly appreciated. So here, what we're saying is that if possible, we want to try and get groups of four because um, obviously that uh, it's good teamwork. Groups of five um, are okay, but. Um, we'll do it one, two, three, four here. So they're all groups of four at the moment, but there might be one group of five. We'll just, if we can do that, that's great. If not, that's fine. So um, what that's saying is if you look at them, uh, normally what would happen is that we'd have, um, you know, uh, perhaps some people coming from Gladstone to Rockhampton for the residential school, but all of these people would be from Mackay students just staying in Mackay and Bundaberg. Now, Bundaberg, we've got four students um, enrolled, and I do need them to register as a group because the other thing, as you might imagine, happens is, is that, you know, this is week two, but sometimes by week four, whatever the deadline is, some people drop out. So the point of the matter is you've got to register your group, even though it's obvious there's four people in Bundaberg, say, for argument's sake. Um, you've still got to register because then I know that you know what you're supposed to be doing. And also I've got the numbers. But also, as I'm saying, if there's somebody in the Bundaberg area that's a distance student and they say, oh, well, why should I drive all the way to Rockhampton? It's fine. They want to come into the Bundaberg campus then that might turn out to be a group of five or a group of six. So I might split them into two groups of three. So that's the kind of information I need by the end of week one so that I can start doing that. There's that facet. And the other facet, of course, is that these are PLCs, these little black boxes. So the point is, is that we have a limited number of them. We don't have three on this campus and six on that campus and that type of thing. So what we're going to do is shift them around. So that's why I've been not panicking, but I've been saying, hey, guys, can you really get your groups together? Because... Um, if, say, in Bundaberg, uh, you end up with eight people, well, we need two, P two PLCs down in Bundaberg. So the reality is, is that we've got to get them down to Bundaberg. And I don't like doing that the night before because obviously that's not very fair to the tech down there. Even the evening. So, so that's kind of why um, I'm sort of pushing hard to, ex to explain that. And as I say, the advantage is, is that as a distance student, you don't have to go too far, um, if possible. And the other thing, of course, is that just the equipment side of it. All right. So any questions about that just to begin with? Good. If I just go back to the share again, just to just to show you that file, I update that file regularly, and that's why it's got a date on it. And that's so. If you're saying to yourself, "Oh no, I, oh yeah, look, I live in the Mackay area or the Rockhampton area," for argument's sake, well, you know, you'd come into Rocky, of course. But the reality is, is that you know, um, here's the Mackay group. So that's a distance student. So they're going to go to Mackay campus. So I've just put in another column to make it obvious where you're going. And also the techs, uh, the technical staff, I say to them, go and look at the Moodle site. So that helps them too, because they don't have to ring me up and ask me or figure out stuff. They just go and they look here and they go, oh, in my, in my car, I've got two groups. So they know pretty quickly by the, hopefully, by the end of week one, depending on your diligence uh, and my pushing you, 
um, that they know that they need at least two pieces of equipment. I mean, I do talk to them, but again, this is a nice snapshot for them to keep track of stuff. So the reality is, of course, that in Mackay, if you are a distance student and you're looking for a group and you don't necessarily want to come to Rockhampton, or um, you know you live in Cairns or Townsville and you don't want to fly, you know, drive away to Rockhampton, you might drive to Mackay for argument's sake, then maybe you're comfortable with doing that as well. So that's the, that's. I'm trying to help you guys out as much as possible. So that's the connotation. So you come to here and you think, oh, am I in group? No, I'm not. Well, oh, hang on, there is a spare person there. Now, the other, the other situation is, of course, is keep in mind that, you know, we all love group work. Of course we love group, yeah. So the point of the matter is, is that, you know, the faster you form the group, it's going to be the group people you like working with. Now, that's not to sort of say, oh, God, we've got this person. And back last week, you know, Johnny Smith is now, oh, John Smith's in our group. That's not what I mean. I, I, what I mean is, is that, you know, you've got to be uh, conscious that to get a good group running, it's now week two, day four. Um, the laboratory is in week five, day two, day, day one and day two. So, like, that's not very far away. Um, and then, as I said beforehand, if we go back, there's a lot of pre-lab stuff to be done. So, when you look at part of the pre-lab is looking at the activity sheets. So getting out the activities, you, know, you don't have to, you can look through them, you don't have to read them, but you just got a feel and think, oh yeah, that's what it's about, that's fine. So at least print them out, bring them with you and print them out, uh, one and two. And then you've got the activity file, so that's talking about, and again, it's 87 pages long, it's not freaky out, it just means that it's really good detailed, really. Simon made that up. Now, Simon made that up in 2012. It's so good, we haven't changed it. Okay, so it's so comprehensive. <laughs> And this is when we were first doing videos and, and, and doing this kind of stuff. So like, you know, as I say, I've been doing this for uh, a little while. Um, so, and then when Simon made the video, so, you know, we're all amateurish, but that's all right. So the reality is, is that when you make up good stuff, it lasts. So it shows you what it looks like and takes you through. So the reality is that, you know, you've got to, as a group, do that and look through it. Now, you don't have to do it as a group all together. You can do it individually, but as long as each one of you, and that's the whole story of, you know, being in a group, group work, we're all good friends, and we're going to, you know, work together. So the video of that just takes you through some of the actions and shows you that as well. So that's the pre-lab stuff you've got to do. So that's what I'm saying. It's now week two, day four. Um, oh, by the way, you've got an assignment coming up in week four. Oh, that's just for this unit. And you've got all oh, those cute questions to do. So... I guess what I'm trying to say is just just be conscious of, um, you know, uh, if you look at the Moodle site and it says to you, get something done by the end of week one, try try and work with people if you can. Because as I say, it's not just um, forming group and getting the group you want, but also it's about the um, prelim stuff. It's about equipment from my side, et cetera, et cetera. So any questions about that? Comfortable? Okay. As I say, look, there's a lot of stuff to do, guys, and I try to give as much information as possible. And sometimes it may sound weird. Why is he, you know, directing us this way, um, you know, in terms of sort of saying, look, there's four people in Bundaberg, obviously that's the group, Patrick, just register it. Uh, it's not obvious because, as I say, there's some dynamics that, that might occur. Or if it, in Mackay, there's five people. Oh, of course, it's going to be a group of five. Well, again, that, that's not necessarily true. You need to tell me because I don't want to, I'm not going to push you into a group or make you do what you want to, well, don't want to do um, all the time. Um, sometimes I will, but um, not all the time, hopefully. All right. So anything else about labs at the moment, just to make you feel comfortable and ensure you're on the right track. Okay, excellent. And as I say, all good work to all those people that have been getting organized and things like that. I um, much appreciate Fabio's been doing stuff and trying to get stuff organized. And he, he did a lot of work to get this done and then it all changed and he's doing this now. So thank you for your patience and uh, diligence and persistence. Likewise with uh, Jaden's been doing a whole range of stuff, getting stuff organized and then you had to deconstruct it and go over here. So again, thanks, Jaden, for all your hard work as well. That's much appreciated. All right. So here we go. Week two. Let's have a look. We go across to the Moodle site. And if we go down to the workshops, as I mentioned to you last week, there's the Zoom session getting loaded up. Um, video stream. So there's, everything's there. So as I say, um, these might necessarily be two hours all the time, but that's where you can find that. And with the Zoom session, as I say, sometimes we'll talk about the assignments, I'll give you some advice, sometimes it'll be just in a general sense, sometimes it'll be about two questions, that type of thing. So just keep in mind that that can be quite useful. Obviously, as we get closer to the exam, okay, and panic, oh, sorry, we're not panic sets in, but um, as <laughs> we talk about the exam, of course, so look, we'll talk about the exam as well and, and uh, be quite candid about different things. Because the other point of the matter is that as we go through, uh, my belief is, as well, is that um, 
you've got a textbook that's I don't know, it's got about 800 pages in it. And my expectation is, is that, you know, the exam is not going to be on 800 pages of the textbook, you know, let's be serious. So I will show you some stuff to sort of like take that textbook and just go, oh, hang on, obviously it's this kind of stuff. A wink and a nod in some ways, in some ways it will be a blatant, I wouldn't worry my time with that. And some of that has got to do with the fact that the assessment items that we're setting you um, cover some of those things. And you'll see there are some techniques a little bit later on where, you know, uh, when you're plotting a graph or something, uh, you know, it takes you 20 pages to do it. Well, in the exam, you've only got a limited amount of time. I'm not going to ask you to do that. Okay, so, so just be aware of that. It's, it's, it's meaningful advice um, to, to um, just, you know, cut down the silliness of you trying to think, oh, I've got to cover a whole textbook in, in, in uh, you know, for the exam, that type of stuff. All right, so if we do go to the workshops, and we're obviously looking at week two, um, some circuit analysis this week, and again, it doesn't matter. If you want to use a particular uh, technique, go for it, whatever you're happy with. It, it, you're not limited. But the reality, of course, is that, as always, as I say, you've got to demonstrate what you're doing. And as you can see here, hopefully you can see I'm demonstrating what I'm doing. Then there's a curious thing here in particular that um, I rave on for a while and then you think, oh yeah, what have I got to do that for? And then why have I got to do that to complicate it? Because, oh, that looks nice. That, you know, that little partial fraction or that little quotient there looks really nice because it's you know, nice form. Um, and anytime you play with fractions, you like to leave them with simple form and then you're going to muck them up and make them harder. But the reality we will see, hopefully within a couple of weeks, is that if you go through now and do the painful process of dividing through by whatever the coefficient of the highest power, this is the now uh, a squared or a, a quadratic, but if you do that now, you'll find that when we start playing around a little bit later on with transfer functions and stuff, you'll be able to turn around immediately and look at the form of that equation and go, hey, listen, there's the natural frequency, I can read it off, or you know, different values. So, um, yeah, persevere with it. Um, so give me some examples, again, some advice. Um, this is another key point here that, you know, you look at this, you think, I'm not a mechanical engineer, I'm an electrical person, where's all the sparky stuff? Well, the point of the matter is, is that, you know, um, you have to talk to those mechanical people, you know, and the civil people, I know that's, you know, I know you have to, but, you know, keep that in mind. So you have to be able to communicate with people, and also if you're a, going to be a mechatronics person, well, obviously, you're going to work across uh, electrical and mechanical things. So mathematically, what we're talking about here is, is that these are just representations. So even if it's got a little springy thing and a brick wall and a block, hang on a minute, that doesn't look like electrical stuff to me. The point of the matter is that these are just representative things. So really, um, what I was just trying to drive home was that the springy stuff could be kind of like this anti-vibration tray and there's isolation things for vibration and dampers. So really, that is an electrical system. It could be, as I say, like a... Um, an air conditioning unit and of course when it kicks in you know it's going to suddenly draw a lot of um, current um, and as it does that of course it sets up a vibration in that so this is about how you design it to stop it from vibrating and obviously you know um, shearing the bolts off or whatever the case may be over time of course and again the other key thing that you perhaps don't realize after you get through your discipline and you, you, you know, you qualify or you identify with where you want to put it, as an electrical engineer for argument's sake, or a civil engineer or a you know, mechatronic or a, or a civil mechanical electrical uh, or mechatronic, the reality then is that you're going to find you're going to spend most of your life, interestingly or sadly, um, being a maintenance engineer um, because <laughs> a lot of time will in actual fact be taking um, your discipline and the interesting things that you do and actually trying to figure out why does that machine blow up, um, why is that corroded wire there. So, you know, one of the other major aspects of your career will be maintenance. So just keep that in mind as well that um, there are a whole range of interesting maintenance techniques and design. This whole unit's about analysis and design. So some of the design features that you um, are going to over your career is to actually, uh, well, not necessarily design out maintenance, but you'll be, that, that is a, certainly a, a maintenance strategy, but you're looking at maintenance in terms of trying to reduce the amount of time you have to, you know, um, take this machine offline, uh, not just an air conditioner, but, you know, a whole system on your production line. So just be conscious of that as well. So we'll talk about that. Assumptions, again, uh, whether it's this, week or any other week, when you're doing a problem, do jot down the assumptions because the reality is that they can make your life much easier. Um, because um, 
first of all, it helps you hew, hew down the problem to sort of say, oh no, I don't want to go over here. I just want to concentrate on this stuff. And then as I say, uh, those lovely initial zero conditions, you know, you should just sigh of relief whenever you see that um, because it just means you can start at zero and everything else drops out. But as you see on the assignment, I'm just being a nuisance and painful to you. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> there are no, no zero initial conditions. So it's just this awful bloody problem. You can't wait. So yeah, okay, so it's there. And also what you'll find is that the sweat and tears and the, well, swearing probably, um, occurs mostly in the assignments. And then once you get that part, you'll see the exam, you'll go, yes, exam's on, you know, straight forward. So, you know, the, the head banging, swearing, and, you know, tossing of uh, crumpled up bits of paper around the place occurs when you're doing the assignments. Probably the two questions as well, but the reality is that, you know, the pain, the gain will come from that pain as you get close, because you'll see the exam, as I say, if you what, start studying for the exam now by doing all this work, believe me, you'll, you'll smile when you sit down and open up that exam paper. All right, so there's some interesting things. Things again, that's going to look like a blur to you as I cycle through, but as I say, you just cycle through um, some rotational things. Yeah, again, you know, like in the exam, am I really going to give you this? No, it takes too long, you know, to the point. So, sometimes an assignment question will have this kind of stuff on it, or you know, like you see the two questions pull it all out, all that kind of stuff. Blah blah blah. It's a blur to you as we go through. Okay, and then so that's all the analog stuff, and again, the digital stuff. Um, we used to do the digital uh, chapter, chapter 13 or whatever it is, uh, basically in week 11. Um, then over the last, this year and um, last year, I rewrote um, the, the, the digital part and I basically um, put in more digital stuff. So this is the second run of this unit in terms of with the digital stuff. It's all introductory stuff. Don't kind of freak out about it, it's not too scary. Um, but again, um, some of it will be in the textbook and then the textbook just doesn't do anything. So I supplement it with other materials as well. So again, look, again, if you find mathematical stuff like, um, you know, uh, garbled or whatever the case may be, the key factor is, of course, is that it's good to have some understanding of it. And this is the basis of my argument or the textbook's argument, how you can get finally, 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 finally. Oh, that's what I've got to do. Okay, so that's finally what you've got to do. So the reality is that if that's a bit gobbledygooky, persevere with it. But the key thing, of course, is that it's the application of the mathematics. So if you find that four pages of explanation, the theory side of it to get you to this bit, look, that's fine. You can put that to one side because the reality is, is that um, it's the understanding and the application. Of it. So the textbook will have problems, okay? Uh, when I mean well, problems in lots of ways, but problems in terms of examples, worked examples. They will jump from here to Uh, you know, to here in a line, okay? So by all means, go to the textbook and go, oh, this is the one of the textbook. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, textbook does in one line. So the reality is, is that, as I say, I don't want you to spend too much time yelling, swearing, and banging your head, um, only when necessary. So the fact of the matter is, is that use my examples to help you explain those things, okay? And that will give you also me whispering at you and saying, this, this, this is what your assignment should look like. Okay, this is what you detail you should be doing, plus, you know, minimising some of it. But, um, and again, as I say, the textbook doesn't give you the explanation behind. So just consciously, to save you the frustration of thinking, oh, that one's in the textbook. I saw that on page seven. I'll, oh, I'll do that. And then you think, oh, it's actually in Patrick's lecture notes. Come to the lecture slides, lecture notes first, then go back to the textbook. All right? Okay, so again, um, so go through. Now, when I say to you, hint, hint, wave, wave, whisper, whisper. Um, assignment one, question one, um, it asks you, you know, obviously you have some sort of um, partial fraction. Well, you know, you have to demonstrate to me that you know it's a proper fraction, so wink, wink, nod, nod. You have to tell me, so this is how you tell me. So just keep that in mind as you're going through. Don't just suddenly jump from here and go, oh yeah, of course it's a partial fraction, I can go on my merry way. Because, you know, the kind of guy I am, sometimes it won't be a proper fraction and you will possibly get part way through it and spend, you know, three pages, four pages and suddenly think, this is not working, what's going on here? And it's because, painful as it is, you didn't do this. <laughs> and if you don't check that and you just fly into it, believe me, you don't want to, you know, spend that, you know, half an hour of your life, you'll never get it back. So, while 99.967% of the problems that you do will be just a preliminary check, 
Uh, write it down. Um, but it will probably work out that it is a proper fraction and you go on your merry way. That, you know, 0 0.376, uh, know, uh, um, when I'm in a, you know, just want to amuse myself, um, I might make that a, you know, your, your assignment question. It may not be a proper fraction. So then you've got to do that polynomial, you know, division. Joy, joy. You know, you don't want to do that. But as I say, so just be conscious of that. And what it also is just driving to you to say, there's nothing worse than solving a problem that you haven't been asked to solve. What I mean by that is that, you know, if I'm asking you to do something, even if uh, me or your supervisor or in the real world, you know, you've been asked to do something and what you hear and what you're asked to do are two different things, then you're not going to do the correct thing. So I guess what I'm saying is that part of this, again, is a silly old uh, control unit week two, day four. Um, but again, it's that professional practice that I'm trying to sort of whisper to you as well to say, listen, check, check, double check, because as I say, um, the industry that you're working in um, is um, is one where you can walk out the door and it can be a very unsafe environment for you or your design and your practices can make it unsafe for others. So as I say, j just be conscious that I'm trying to give you advice and look, you can listen to it and go, oh, yeah, whatever, we're on to another problem now. So, as I say, take some of it on board as you go. Some of you won't take on board, but look, just, just to drive the point home, um, some things you have to live. Can I just say, it doesn't matter how much advice anybody gives you, um, but as I say, these silly little things or these pedantic things you might think or these you know, particular things that he's, you know, why is he raving on about that? It is a self-check. It's just it's a pull you up to sort of say, hang on a minute, am I, can I push that button? Is that okay? Hang on, I push the button and smoke's coming out of that machine. Why would that be happening? So it's to just make you, give you little pointers to, to try and think in, in those kind of professional ways. And as you'll see, uh, the digital part of each week is only a small part, it's only an introductory part. And, and equally, um, just sliding up again, what we're doing is only first order holes, as you would have heard on the lecture when I was talking about it. There are others, let's get back up again. So you can get more complicated um, problems than this. Um, in terms of the uh, zero holes or whatever. But I'm gonna just stick with zero holes because it's gonna be the same process. And you'll see I've written up a little section about that somewhere that describes what happens when you do um, have more complicated ones. But as I say, this is an introductory unit. So just, you know, just sort of be comfortable with that. And as I said, just, you've got lots of problems to do. Make sure the textbook's got, you know, 400,000 more. That's great, fantastic, um, you know. In the uh, you know in the holidays when you want something else to do um, you don't really have a lot um, if you don't want to have a lot uh, go and do them then now while well, you've got this 12 week period where you're locked in the stuff and you have to do X Y and Z just stay with the questions that I give you in the lecture slides and in the tutorial uh, problems and then obviously the assignment questions if you've got that bank of questions and you can work with them and you're pretty you know pretty proficient fine you're going to do really well all right so pretty much that's you know. This is kind of what we do. This is what this is a catch-up period where I make assumptions that you've already looked at this. Um, blah 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 blah. All right. Any questions with regards to the lecture slides? Any any you're comfortable with that? Any any clarification that people are looking for? Okay, that's good. Okay, if we go back, the next obvious thing is of course uh, the tutorials. Week. Uh, well, uh, now, as I say, some people last week had only got started, so maybe they didn't even look at two questions. Is there anything from last week's tutes that people want to check on? Okay. Anything from this week's tutes? Just looking at the lovely questions that we have. Anything in particular? And as you see, it's kind of half-half. There'll be a couple of analog questions, a couple of digital ones, or mostly analog ones and only one digital one, or sometimes there are sections that we do that um, we don't even do digital stuff because it's just, it just amps up too fast. So you'll catch that up in other units. So comfortable with the two questions, anybody? And I say, hopefully by now, don't be shy. You don't need to be shy with me or the group. We all work together. So anything in particular, do you think? No, comfortable? Yeah, that question to you, uh, Patrick, you didn't cover in the lecture, but it is in the book. Um, I was able to find out the book explained it and just follow that through and that's fine. Yeah. Um, Thank you for that, Brad. Uh, that's the other point too. Sometimes, again, it's like the assignment. Sometimes the assignment, um, since I've um, just rewritten parts of this unit, I'm sort of um, being a bit, oh, what's the word? 
reserved, I'll say. Um, but I've been teaching the unit for like 20 years or something. So when the other, before that, I was having problems where they were quite um, novel, I'll say. <laughs> I'll say. Uh, and I'm going to ramp up with that over time. But at the moment, just sort of as I sort of figure out how the cohort works, et cetera, et cetera, and looking at your other units, because we've just had a change in the, um, the course overall. So the fact of the matter is, is that that's why I updated this to put digital stuff in it because it wasn't over there. So um, when you go from this unit to another unit, um, once I see how that settles down, I'll go and think, oh, yeah, what are they doing over there? Oh, I can make this a bit more harder now, or not harder, but more interesting, you know what I mean? Um, uh, I've had robotic stuff, and uh, my background's robotics and uh, control systems. My PhD is in, uh, uh, in um, control systems um, for robots. So, um, I, to do that stuff. So there's nothing here about robots per se, but in the assignments I've had that in the past. Um, so I've stopped doing it just at the moment while we ramp up. And I, um, as you might imagine, uh, I had some edit. I edited um, uh, in readiness for last year's offering, offered it, and then I went through and went, oh yeah, that could be a bit better done. Oh, that could be. So I've spent between now uh, and last year when I finished was re-editing and, and updating stuff. So now I'm going, oh okay, it's the second time through. I'm feeling a bit more comfortable. That's good. Yeah, how did they react to that? That's good. So. And I had to go and make a whole new set of videos, blah, blah, blah. But the point is now that once that's better down, I can go back and go, right, now, I've got all my stuff here, I'm comfortable with it, yeah, that, that I can, that'll give the basis for that. They'll be able to solve that problem because they'll, they'll have to go to page 42, or, you know, like lectures three type of thing. But once that happens, um, there'll be more mechatronic type things and, and um, uh, 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 you know, production line things. They won't be straight up. Like so, so. Hang with me. All right, so nothing about the two questions. That's good. Okay, so then the next obvious thing is the laboratories, and we've already talked about the laboratories, but I'll just drive home again. You know, wink, wink, nod, nod, but uh, drive home again. The reason why I'm raving on about the laboratories is because, A, you have to get organised, and that's very important for you as an individual person, and then obviously for the group, um, it's very important to, you know, you might work with all those people and always work with them, and you're happy with that. Um, but the other point matters is getting that pre-lab stuff done. So, as I said, that uh, are nearly finalised. Also, of course, um, you can get an exemption for the labs, and we've talked about that beforehand, but just, um, you know, um, you have to show me some evidence of that, et cetera, et cetera, so keep that in mind as well. And then the residential school itself, I'll just quickly glance at that. Um, the way I've designed it is that everybody's in their home campus pretty much, read this information, make sure you've got covered shoes, there's nothing worse on 8.30 in the morning on Monday to go, oh, they're nice thongs, okay? Make sure you're wearing covered shoes, otherwise we're gonna have to send you home. Simon does have a spare pair of shoes up there, but I don't know about you, but I, I'd have to bring my own socks. Um, but that's just me, but that's okay, maybe you like that guy. Uh, so now when you go through the schedule, you'll, you'll see that there's a lot of time for you. And what I mean by that is that you get in, yeah, get in, Get in by 8.30, get into the room, hey, it's cold this time of year, kind of thing. get in the room, get nice and warm. Uh, you can't take your coffee in with you because it's a laboratory, uh, all that kind of stuff. But make sure you get your shoes on, got your stuff ready, come in, have your laptop, already have your template, uh, and then we'll go through some pre-lab stuff. We'll take you through the write-up again, I'll give you some advice, uh, wink, wink, nod, nod, sort of stuff, so well, don't do that, do this, and then get on with it. So you've got three hours roughly to get the lab done, and then basically I push you out the door and say to you, go and find a space together, a nice comfortable space together, and uh, work on this because you've got a fair bit to do. So the point of the matter is, is that it's due 10 p.m. that night. So we'll go through other things as well, just to get this in your head so that when you do turn up, it doesn't sound strange. Um, so then um, you go off and do that. And then um, the point of the matter is, is that that evening, I, at 10 p.m., download, I mark the five or six I got to mark. Then that night at home, like a lot of places, it might be two o'clock in the morning by the time I finish. But the point of the matter is the bar blade from home, it might take me oh, another two and a half days. So the point of the matter is, is that I might not do it till I come in the morning. I'll try to do it at night. If it works at night and everything's working okay, I'll upload them. Um, but I, they will be definitely there in the morning. So even in the morning, I'll start the session for argument sake and you get on with number two, the second lab. And then I'll say, look guys, I'm just gonna go to my office get you started, go back to my office, upload them, and then basically we can talk individually. You can look at it while you're doing the other lab. The key thing will be that you will get the feedback, the comments, the number, the mark, there in that uh, second day for the first lab. You'll be able to go, oh, okay, yeah, we can fix that up. That's no drama. You'll do that for the second lab, and then on the Tuesday, you write the lab up. Again, for three hours, you're working there, quite solid on task. 
we push you out the door, you get the second one done. If you get it done by two o'clock that afternoon, you be uploaded for God's sake, get rid of it. And then the point of the matter is that night, I will then at 10 p.m. dutifully download them, mark them. And again, the same thing, a lot of them upload them um, on uh, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday morning, probably early Wednesday morning, or um, and when I come into work. So by the time Wednesday afternoon is done, you will have your residential school completed, you'll have your assessment completed, and you'll know what your lab mark is, and you can just move on your merry way. Okay, so then it's all over and done with. That's how I like to operate. Okay. All right, so you've got to be on task, and that's why you've got to be prepared. You've got to do that prep stuff so that you are confident. It doesn't mean that you're going to come in and know everything. It just means that you'll be a bit more comfortable and um, you know, just, just, just a more interesting experience for everybody. Okay, um, so that's the lecture, workshop, the uh, uh, tutorial questions, the lab. Okay, the next obvious thing to talk about, if anybody wants to talk about it, is the assignment. Is there anything about the assignment that you want to ask? And as we talked about beforehand, sometimes it'll be this rather cryptic conversation, but that's okay. We'll see how we go. <laughs> we'll see how we go. Anything? Um, Who's brave enough? I'm just trying to work out how to word this, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're trying to think that without swearing? Or <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That, that's already been over the last two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that question one, that question one's a doozy, and it's a doozy on purpose for obvious reasons. It's got a couple of it's a doozy, here's the dooziness. <laughs> One, it's not zero initial condition. So you think, oh, how do you do that? And that's the whole point of it. Number two, it's, oh, are these real roots? Oh, I don't think they are. So they might be complex roots for argument's sake. So then it's just, it's just a, it's mathematical, that's all. So that's the second thing. And then the third thing is just that, you know, um, it's a big elephant. So, you know, start nibbling at its ear or something. You know, you just keep saying to yourself, oh my God. Oh, yeah, okay, so yeah. You might have to run the elephant down and hit it with a big broom or something. I'm not sure. All right. Yeah. So, Bradley, you sort of got... Um, okay. Uh, answer this if you can. If you can't, just say you can't. Um, oh. Question two of that assignment. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at it thinking it's a mixture of question three and four from that second tute. Would that assessment be correct? Uh, uh, kind of, sort of, yeah. Kind of, sort of. Thank you. That's all yeah. I need to know. Thank I don't know. It's a good thing to zero in on. Again, um, you can use some logic. In other words, um, it's week two, right? The assignment is due in week four. Okay, so how I operate is that anything that we do in week four or any of the week that the assignment is due in, it's not on the assignment. So, okay, so that leaves week one, two, and three. So in, in the case of the first assignment. So therefore then um, you can keep saying to yourself, oh, I'm just gonna keep looking at week one, two, and three, not week one, two, three, and four, which might sound like silly, but they, it, it, it becomes more obvious when you get onto the second assignment because you think, God, I've got 48 bloody weeks to look at. So um, yeah, so really what you're saying, what I'm saying to you is that really, if you look across week one, two, and three, you should trigger something that will help you with the assignment. Does that make sense? All right, thanks, Patrick. That's okay, yep. Anything else? And as I say, the assignment will have an analog question and we'll have a digital question. That's just the thing that I'm doing at the moment. It's sort of obvious that's what it's going to do. But as I say, they're, I won't say they're bog standard questions because they are not. They're little tricky little monkeys. Okay, they're kind of a little bit tricky monkeys. All right, okay. Anything else? All right. Good to see smiling faces. That's a good thing. So is it, are, are you kind of feeling comfortable? You're kind of getting, getting the idea that I'm saying to you, I'm, I'm your friend, I'm here to help you. You, you. You're kind of getting that connotation that it's ask anything. There's no harm in asking anything. Uh, even if it's about the assignment, I'm not going to tell you, you go away, it's an assignment question. Um, you, okay. Again, as I say, you might get a question you know, because of your question. But the reality is that I'll try and just guide you as best I can with, uh, without leading you down the garden path. I don't believe in that kind of stuff. So the key thing I want you to take away is that A, I want you to be a success in the unit. To be a success, just listen, you know, and do. If you do those two things, you're going to be pretty good because I try to give as much. And again, as I say, when you look at the assignment, you think there's four pages to the assignment. Three of it's advice, all about advice. Well, you know, <laughs> um, what tends to happen with this unit um, is uh, the first assignment, people either get started late or they just go, oh, yeah, whatever, whatever. And they sort of do the problems. And, you know, I'll have, um, 
I'll have about, uh, just as a round number, like uh, unless I've got say 30 students, I might have about two, three, not as many as five, but say two or three that for their first assignment will get either, you know, 19 out of 20 or 20 out of 20, because they've actually been listening or they're just those kind of people that are, uh, you know, like to work at that standard. I, I set a high standard, guys. I, I'll admit it and I'm a pain. I am a painful person to work with and it's there for a reason. It's to bring you up. It's not to knock you down. If you're finding things that are a problem, come and ask. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Come here, come here, come on. I'll, I'll, you know, be, come, come be part of it. I'll, I'll, I'll help you as best I can. And then what happens is that you'll get, you know, at the other end, you'll get, say, um, four or five people that have failed. It's because they haven't read the material. They, you know, they've been, they might have got started in week two, yeah, or they might have, you know, been enrolled right from the start, but they haven't really been concentrating and listening, they haven't looked at anything. So I guess, you know, what I'm trying to say is that by the time we get to the second assignment, I end up with about, you know, oh, I don't know, about 40% getting the 18, 19s and 20s out of 20 for the assignment. And then that other group that, you know, I don't want you to fail, they hopefully click, and I have a chat to you beforehand, you know, when we do the first assignment, if you're in that category, and hopefully you're moving up more into that, you know, uh, you know, 12 out of 20, 14 out of 20, that type of thing, or, you know, 10 out of 20, whatever the case may be. Uh, but the point of the matter is, is that, you know, uh, you haven't failed, your life's not over. The point of the matter is, is you know, we're going to try and bring you up to a standard that hopefully that you'll be confident and confident in the unit. So please keep that in mind. All right, good. Okay, it's 11.40, so as I say, it's, this is only as long as I keep talking. Um, so if I stop talking, um, we can end the meeting, and if you've got no more questions, we can just end the meeting. Yeah, Patrick, just about PLCs, um, I'm, I don't have a background in it at all, and um, going through lecture four, the, I noticed that it's more of a summary rather than um, giving us an idea as to how to think about the programming. Um, I've looked at the 87-page uh, document, and that all seems to be just a bucket load of pages about uh, this is what you click on. Yeah. Um, do you have anything um, available that you could put up that would give us an idea on, on how to think, how the PLC thinks, if, if that makes any sense, like any initial um, uh, information about the, the programming of them uh, at all that, that we could read sure. to help? So uh, th this unit is introductory, and particularly with the PLCs, if you look at it, it's just been rammed in with all due respect, but it's just, it's just been added in. Um, so the reality is that it, that's literally what we're asking you to take away from it. This, this is a PLC, it's a black box, it's been used over here for a long time, you can use it over here in really dirty areas, and it's quite a robust kind of thing, and you know, yes, it gathers information and it sends information over here, and we'll make a decision if you want to make a decision. That's kind of the, the ultimate context that we want you to get. The second thing is, is that um, the labs is the, you know, again, there's this, this many kind of um, functions that this machine has in terms of, you know, making decisions, uh, timing something, uh, and that, uh, so what we've done is limited that to only two to sort of give you an idea. Um, and uh, the questions themselves uh, in the tutorial are, uh, you know, again, sort of like an introduction. So to be honest, Brad, that's kind of the connotation. Um, if you went and Googled PLCs, you'd find a whole range of stuff with regards to the ladder programming and stuff like that. That's really for another unit um, because the, we, we're just basically saying to you, hey, look at this black box thing. Um, push that button, what happens? Oh, hang on, yes, don't push that button because smoke will come out of it. Um, you know, that type of thing. So there's a little bit of ladder enough to sort of just do some so I guess what I'm trying to say is that when you walked into the workplace, it's only sort of said, oh, yeah, we use PLCs, or that's a PLC control thing. You think, oh, that's a PLC, that's that black box thing. Oh, yeah, that's right, okay. So it's, it's, it, it really is at that fundamental arbitrary way. If you've done, some of the people have got um, uh, exemptions because they've done the associate degree, and associate degree people are obviously uh, techni technical technicians kind of people, so they do get into the ladder stuff and, and that kind of thing. So, um, and sometimes in another unit, we might do that as well. Um, uh, so they, that's why they got the exemption because they've done a lab, a couple of labs that are like an application, if you like, they're beyond this. Um, what we've been trying to do, Simon and I, for, for quite some time now is um, uh, rejig those labs. But what's happened is that um, life over here has got too busy for us. They've changed the whole course. So we had to stop doing stuff because we didn't know what they, 
So, so the bottom line I would say to you is, um, take what I've given in terms of the staff and the experience you'll get in the, in the laboratory, um, and then anything else beyond that, look, um, the Google God, um, she will tell you, you know, infinite uh, wisdom with regards to ladder programming. Yeah. It, it's beyond the scope of this unit. It, 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 no. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the easiest way to go. I mean, yeah. but by all means, um, I encourage you to go looking for it, but yeah. And then hopefully in another couple of years, we'll, we'll uh, fulfill that um, a bit better in some ways as well. But, All right. Thanks very much, Patrick. Not to, I don't want to push you off, but that's kind of the reality, you know, that, and I don't want you, and I know you've got a passion and interest in it, but equally, you know, um, do that over a cup of coffee and, and uh, you know, in the wee small hours between doing question one and question two of your assignment, um, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, just for the sheer joy of it. No problem. Okay. I have time to do that, do I? <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're sleeping, do it. <laughs> uh, I feel like that sometimes. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. All right. Anything else? All right. Well, take care. Run, be free. And uh, as I say, feel comfortable to ask anything. Get organised. That's the other key thing, you know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, take care, be safe, and all the best. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, guys. See you later. See you later. See you later.